Bright is on a journey to make every home sustainable. That's why we were set up. We uh, very strongly believe in the mission to reduce Australia's emissions and help households on that journey. And what we found is that one of the biggest barriers that households face is actually the upfront cost. And that's where Bright comes in. We provide affordable, accessible finance to homeowners. And in the last six years, we've lent out over $1.3 billion. We've helped around 100,000 households make the journey into solar products. And we partner with over 2,000 solar retailers and installers across the country. Well, I think at Bright, we're in a really enviable position that our core business actually funds sustainability. You know, we fund good. We help households reduce their emissions. We help them take this, their first steps on that clean energy journey. And that's obviously something that we're very passionate about. And we're a full purpose, um, purpose-driven company, and that attracts a lot of people um, to work for us. But in a way, that's external. That's what we do outside. And we're starting to consider, while we help decarbonize the planet in general, how do we also, as well as being green on the outside, think about being green on the inside too? And what's the impact of our own operations on our people, our planet, the communities in which we live? We've committed to firstly becoming carbon neutral. And at the start of this, we kind of thought that would be the end of the process, that was the outcome. But the more we've got into it, what we've realized is that becoming carbon neutral is actually only the first step and the first step of that journey. And there's a lot more to come, especially in emissions reductions and the initiatives that we have to put together as an organization. So we're currently working out what those are and we're going to come up with a strategy and a plan in terms of what that zero carbon or net zero future at Bright might look like. But we're also looking at the Climate Active Standard, which is a standard by Australian governments, um, endorsed by Australian governments, um, and thinking about how we can progress that journey going forward too. So giving more credibility, I think, to that standard um, that we've, or the, the carbon neutral pathway that we've taken, and using Climate Active in that way is pretty key. I think the other key thing in this space is definitely you want to be sure as an organisation that what you're putting out holds weight and it can be verified and validated. And what Part Zero do is they actually do that verification and validation for you. So as an organisation, you get the comfort that you're not just putting numbers out that can be um, pressure tested or can be questioned or challenged, that the numbers you're putting out are robust, that they're rigorous and they have been checked. And for an organisation that, that's in this space, I think it's really important that you don't get caught out greenwashing or being, being part of that kind of area because that can be quite damaging to reputation. So for us, having Part Zero there, testing, analysing and making sure that the results we're putting out are correct, I think gave us a lot of confidence in the process as well. But the big problems being we haven't had a baseline in which to actually measure uh, in a standard way what our emissions profile is. And using Part Zero, what we've been able to do now for the first time is quantify the impact that we're having and that's led to a whole further series of conversations and discussions around what the, uh, I guess, a more structured program might look like in terms of decarbonisation for Bright. It was really important that we got advice to help us go in the right direction, but also have a sense of being forward-looking and modern, using technology and collaboration, because we're also a born digital business. So I think the three key things that we like about Part Zero have been the ease of use, um, the partnership model, and also the collaboration. And what that means for us, firstly, is um, the partnership model has meant that um, we've always had a person to guide us on the journey. And when you first start going into this space as someone who's, who's new to sustainability, it can be very daunting and it can be very confusing. And there are so many different terms and different schemes and different standards out there. So it's hard sometimes to know where to turn. So for the first thing Part Zero provided us was really strong advice and guidance at every step of the journey. The second piece is around the platform and this was quite interesting for us because it meant that there was a central repository of all the information that we collected. It meant that people could actually access that throughout the organisation when they needed to and it encouraged transparency amongst our team and also collaboration amongst our team as well. And it made us, I guess, being a digital company and a, and a cloud company using that software, we're very comfortable with that kind of way of working. So that was a real benefit. But what we actually found going through the process is that um, 
Becoming carbon neutral is not a linear exercise. You don't just start and, and keep going. And there were times when, for weeks on end, we were quite comfortable going along, but then suddenly we'd have four or five key questions that we needed to get answered. And at that moment, we could press the button and, and phone a friend at part zero and, and organize that consultation. And so that was really useful to us during the process to make sure that no matter how far we went along uh, at different stages, we always had access to the expertise from part zero and to get those questions answered. What's been interesting for us is the quantification of this and really being able to see the numbers and understand then you know, what your source of emissions are. So what it means is we put in our data and that was our key piece, but the Part Zero platform took care of the, the detailed uh, calculations and also the comparisons. And it enables you then to focus on what matters and look at the actual raw data that comes out the other end. I'd probably look at this from a, a short-term and a long-term view or a, or a tactical and strategic view. So we've had a few quick wins, um, things that you might think are pretty obvious, but maybe weren't so obvious to us, us when we started. So one of the first things we've done is switch to a, a green energy provider. Our office now has better end of journey facilities to encourage people to, to bike to work or to take alternative forms of transport. Um, we've looked at how we source um, seasonal produce in our office and we've moved to a much more sustainable merchandising system. And all those I think are the, the quick and easy wins that you can put in place. Um, but what we've also done is set up a green working group internally because we think it's important that rather than have these initiatives be imposed uh, top down, we actually engage our staff in this journey with us and let them present ideas to us that they think have merit. Um, but what's definitely come out to us in the numbers has been when you look at the, the emissions profile that you generate from the Part Zero platform, you start to then ask the next logical question, which is, well, what's the source of all these emissions? And you start to look into your scope three emissions, which are outside your organization. And that leads you then to have some really interesting conversations with your suppliers. You know, people that you provide you with legal services or marketing services or advertising. And you kind of ask them, well, how far are you along in your climate journey? Have you considered providing carbon neutral services to us as well? Because that affects uh, our emissions profile. So I think this is starting to uncover and generate conversations that we're moving up the value chain with some of our suppliers, um, which are very rich conversations and very deep conversations in how do we actually reduce emissions as, a, as an ecosystem rather than just as one single organisation. And I think those conversations um, have a long way to go, but that's really where some of the benefit, I think, in the long term will start to be felt. I think there's a lot of expectation as well from our staff that Bright's also a leader in this space and we not just um, talk the talk but we walk the walk as well and although we're, we're helping the overall emissions profile externally in our core business, also thinking internally more creatively about what that might mean for emissions reduction inside Bright.